Have you ever wondered how tiny colored little X's can make a beautiful work of art? Hi, my name is Corinne Ford and today I will be demonstrating for you the art of cross stitching. Now to cross stitch you just need a few simple tools and today we're going to do a, a little simple kit. Now your kit will generally come with the basics of what you need. It comes with your fabric, your hoop, your floss or your colors that you're going to be stitching with, the pattern itself and directions on how to stitch with the pattern having symbols with corresponding colors so you know what to stitch where, um, and your needle, which is hanging around here somewhere, there it is. and your needle, which usually comes in a plastic little package, but the one in here came on a little tiny piece of canvas. Any extras that you're going to need will be a pair of scissors, whether embroidery scissors or normal scissors work. I prefer embroidery because it's a little tiny, works better to get into the little spaces. A needle minder to hold your needle as you work so you don't lose it or you don't accidentally break it against something or stab yourself while trying to reach for it in your bag, your, your design. It's just simply a magnet. Just two magnets together that you put one on either side of the fabric. Extra needles, just in case you lose it or break one. A needle threader is always helpful. Um, and thread gloss to make your thread nice and shiny. So for this kit, we are doing three strands of floss. Generally you do two, but today in this one we're doing three. Each strand of floss comes with six thre six. six strands, sorry, <laughs> I'm having trouble talking today, um, and basically I've already glossed my thread and I've already started the stitch. So what you do is basically you start making X's. So you want to pull through from the back to the front, so your front is going to be your design, your back is going to be where all the stitching happens, and you want to start at the middle, which is Point it out here, but generally it'll have a black arrow here on on the side, so you just kind of come to the middle and start there, and you work your way out. And so you come through, and you come through the back in the middle, you pull through, and you start a stitch. So you go over this way. So you make a diagonal forward slash lines. So in this first row, we have four stitches. So I have made four, so the yellow is the eye, so I have made the yellow, or I have the yellow, and then when you come back, you just complete the X's, so you come back the other way, so you come back this way, so you backward slash, basically. Well, in the back, what's going on is that you're just going like this, and you see this little tail here? Well, when you first start to stitch, you're going to hold that tail so you don't lose just pull right through and you stitch over it to hold it in place after you do a couple of stitches around it It'll be pretty secure and you can just let it go and trim off the excess So I'm going to pause the video now and I'm going to finish up This yellow color or do a couple more rows here. I'm not gonna finish it. I think I'll do a couple more rows to show you You know, I like to go down instead of up because going down you can just Stitch this way going up you kind of have to come from the top down for the first stitch and it's a little bit more complicated So I'll do a couple more rows and then I will show you how to close off the stitch and the finished product Be right back Okay, I came back a little early. Um, I just wanted to show you What I'm doing here Let's see there we go. So see I'm making the slashes. I'm coming from the back I'm pulling my thread all the way through. I'm going diagonal to the top. And just making the slash. So, be right back. I'm back once again. Alright, so now to complete the X. So we go almost making one more stitch, but we don't. We kind of psych it out and we come back through. And we've completed the X. And just go back till you finish the row. And then I'll show you how to close off the stitch and the finished product. Be right back once again. 
and I'm back. All right, so now to close off the stitch, pretend like we did all the yellow, we're all done, we're ready to start on our next color. So what you do to close off the stitch, you can either tie it shut, like you would like wrap it around your finger, you just wrap it around the needle and pull it tight, making a couple knots. But what I like to do is I like to just go back through a couple of the stitches that I had already stitched and just pull it through. So kind of like how you started where you wrapped it around, so you just kind of sew it through. So you just, just like that. Now I like to wrap it around a couple times and then snip off the excess. I'll be right back. And I'm back and I have completed the stitch. And that's where your needle binder comes in to hold your needle while you get your next color and things like that. So you just continue to do that. You count your stitches. You count, you know, make sure everything count twice, stitch once, as we like to say. And when all is said and done, you should have a beautiful creation that looks something along the lines of this. And that's what the back looks like. Now, I've only been cross-stitching for a couple years, and I absolutely love it. I think it's a fun way to kill time. I think it's a fun way to just kind of zone into yourself. They make great gifts. They make just fun hobbies. And I like to show you some of my completed works. This is one of my favorites that I've done. It's my biggest one I've done so far. I have that one. And as you can see, there's tons of patterns that you can choose from. They don't have to be just, you know, your grandma's cross stitch. Um, and then you get to learn all sorts of fun things like back stitching and these kind of line stitches. And yeah, thank you for joining me and I hope that you try it to yourself someday.